done this for a Hey guys, I haven't done this for a while, um, but here I am. Uh, not that I haven't done this for a while, but I just did a video yesterday. So, not that I haven't done a video for a while, but I haven't um, uh, taken a video after a song for a while. I used to, uh, way back when I started doing YouTube videos, um, hello, by the way, hope you guys are doing well. Way back when I started doing YouTube videos, I used to play a song first and then preach a sermon on that song. Now, because of YouTube video, uh, rules, I can't play songs anymore, but um, I can mention a song and then post it and you can listen to it yourself. I was listening to Love on the Brain by Rihanna. Now, I've, I heard the song covered before, but I didn't really listening to listen to the words until just today. And um, all this week I've been talking about the new normal and, and releasing from all these things and dealing with yourself in quarantine and like and like getting down to the root of with your family and with your friends of who you really are and asking them who they really are and breaking cha the chains of busyness to really find your purpose i've been talking about that all week um and this song as i listen to the words is about a woman who says um, it must be love on the brain, but if you listen to the lyrics, it's not love at all. It seems like bondage um, because she keeps going back to the, this this thing and just uh, just says, you keep loving me and loving me, and it must be love on the brain. But if you listen carefully to the lyrics of the song, it's not love at all, it's bondage. And sometimes we lock our, we start something like, we start watching uh, porn for one reason, but we get hooked on it because it feeds something in us that we've been ignoring. Like it could be the need for um, validation, physical validation to, to say that we're, we're somebody, or it could be just, um, you're curious about different sexual things, whatever it is, you start for one reason, but you end up, um, being addicted to that thing to, um, to the point where you can't stop it, where you uh, feel that you keep going back and you keep going back and you say never again, but it keeps on happening because you, it's now a stronghold. Um, and basically the Lord's saying, it's not love, it's not love, it's bondage and you need to be broken from it. And in this quarantine, while you're stuck in the house, uh, think about those things that you keep coming back to, though, that relationship that is not good for you, uh, that habit that is not good for you, that thing that is not good for you. And ask yourself this, is, does, you might say, I love this, I love this, but um, does that thing you love line up with the word of God? Is it patient it, or does it instill patience in you? Is it kind? 
does it instill kindness in you um, and go down the list? Is it or does it instill those things in you? If it if it isn't or doesn't, honey, it's not love. It's bondage. Um, I hear many of uh, abusive women say, oh, he loves me. He loves me. Honey, he doesn't love you. He loves to control you. She loves to control you. And a lot of people say, oh, just leave or whatever. You can't just leave when, once you're in bondage. Uh, you, you need help because what happens is you start off just, um, just with a little thing, and but then th that person, that thing beats you down so bad, whether it be porn, whether it be a relationship, whether it be your toxic, toxic friends that you're hanging around with. They beat you down so bad that you don't even know which way is up, but you need um, professional help to help untangle uh, what's been plaguing you. And what, what the Lord's um, saying to me today, it's not love, it's bondage. And he wants you to be broken free of it. See, it's, it's like you know something is not good for you, but you keep on going back to it, back to it and back to it because it's what's comfortable. And sometimes going beyond comfortable comfortability, it's scary. But I'm telling you, honey, there's more to life than what you're living. There's more to life than toxic friends. There's more to life than toxic relationships. There's more to life than negative relationships. There's more to life than mediocrity. There's a joy. There's a peace. There's a tranquility that is just waiting for you if you, only if you're man and woman enough to say, I need it. And even, even in quarantine, you may not be able to uh, go anywhere right now, but you can at least acknowledge and admit that you need the tranquility, you need the joy, you need the peace that is only a prayer away. And, and most times it, it doesn't stop with prayer. It begins with prayer. A lot of people say, um, just pray about it, it will go away. But prayer is not a, cr a crutch. Prayer releases you um, to get the help that you need. Prayer, prayer uh, releases you uh, to, toward um, the destiny that God has for you. Prayer releases you re um, toward restoration. Um, and what, one other thing that the Lord was saying to me was about fruitfulness. All, he said this, he said, all those plans that you were so busy, um, uh, that, that you were too busy to put in place, he said, you have time to put them in place now. He said, all those dreams that you put down because you thought it was too hard for you, he said, start planning because when you can, Physically, I will expect you to give me a return on my investment. God has invested so much in you, beloved, and he wants you now 
to take this time of rest to rest, but to also um, plan and put those start start writing the vision, making it plain, researching online so that when the quarantine lifts, you'll be ready to go. You've been living in mediocrity for too long, saying, I can't do this because I'm this, or I don't have the money, or I need to get rich quick, or I need to uh, do one of those things that I see on YouTube before I can uh, get the money to do this. All you need is a strategy. So in in this quarantine, the Lord is saying, ask for a strategy. Ask for a strategy. He's saying, be fruitful in quarantine. He's saying, be fruitful. Be fruitful. He said, um, he, one of the commandments that he gave to Adam and Eve was be fruitful and multiply. What are you supposed to be fruitful with and multiply? He's given you this time of rest to relax if you need to spend time with the family, uh, do all that stuff like I said in the other videos. But he's also given you this time to strategize. Sometimes we have to take a break and strategize and stop for a second and say, Lord, what is the strategy for this? How would you how would how would you like to accomplish this through me? Because if if he gave if he gave an idea to you, he also will give a strategy. He's just waiting for you to calm down to slow down long enough to hear him and so you can get the strategy and start planning. If it's a business, start researching. If you need to take courses, maybe you can take online courses. Um, if you need to uh, get mentorship to do certain things, maybe you can uh, do that. Maybe you can do something online for now that will help you get ready. Maybe you can read books about the history of whatever um, career you're wanting to get into. See, I'm into film, right? Um, I my, my thing now is to start a film company, to be honest. Um, so what I did way back when was start with the history of filmmaking. So I went on audible.com, read everything I can I could about filmmaking, uh, really got uh, um, up close with filmmaking found out what a director is, found out what a producer was, uh, found out the difference between the two, found out what the different positions were, found out how to make a film, found out how films were produced. And I don't even have a company yet. But when the Lord releases me into that, I will have a bit of first-hand knowledge so I won't go in blind. I will know about the Lumiere brothers who were the first movie makers in, uh, I think it was uh, about 1918. They did the first silent films. I will know what a wide shot is. I will know what a two shot is. I will know what a close shot uh, close up is, I will know all these different shots because I read, I read and studied 
um, a lot of people want this certain thing and they want to do it quick. And you, I, I, um, I know you've seen uh, the videos on YouTube where it says, make this much money in this time and whatever. And I'm not saying it's not true. I, I don't know. I haven't tried them. But all I know is real, real satisfaction comes from putting the work in. Real satisfaction doesn't come from making a thousand dollars a day or whatever. Real satisfaction comes from putting the work in, putting the time in, putting the sweat equity in. Um, one of the pro one of the indictments of, about this generation is we don't put sweat, sweat equity in. We want things to come easy. We want things to just sail on through. But real life, anything sustaining takes work. Um, sometimes when things come quick, you either don't know how to handle it or it goes as quickly as it came. But if you have to work on it, you know how to sustain it. You know how to keep it because you failed. You had to put the work in. You had to lose some things. You gained some things. You lost some things. But in the losing, you learn some things, you did some things, so that when it really comes, you you know how to keep it. A lot of people, when they get things too fast, they don't know how to keep them. They spend their money and whatever, and they're broke because they didn't have to work for it. They didn't they didn't know how to keep it. They didn't know how to sustain it. Getting something may be easy, but sustaining it and knowing how to keep it, it that's the challenge. But if you can overcome that challenge, it will be gold and you can take those tools for the rest of your life. Failure can be used as a tool to propel you to your destiny. I'll say that again. Failure can be used as a tool to propel you to your destiny. When I say destiny, that's where God wants you to be. And, and people can have multiple destinies throughout their lives. Like when you're 20, may not be the same destiny as when you're 40, God may have you have you do a whole bunch of things throughout your life, or maybe just one thing. But just stay open to what God wants you to do and um, be prepared. Get yourself prepared now for what's coming. Get yourself prepared now for what he has. Get out that vision board. Create, create whatever you need to create to get your business off the ground. Stop lamenting on what you lost and work from what you have now. If you start now collecting information, making notes, deciding what you have to do to get where God has wanted you to go, you'll, you'll be gold when it comes time. When your name comes called, you'll be, when your name gets called, you'll be ready. A lot of people, when their name comes up, they're not ready. They're not ready to step in to what God has planned for them. And I have to tell you this. You have what it takes. You have what it takes to do what God has called you to do. You have the ingenuity. You have the ideas. You have whatever you need to do what God has called you to do. 
You are not a failure. Those were just stepping stones. You, you failed and failure was a lesson to teach you what you needed to know. Without failure, you wouldn't have the tools to know what you need to know to achieve what you need to achieve. Just know that you have what, what it takes and you are enough. If he needed somebody else, he would call somebody else. If he needed somebody else to mother those children, those children wouldn't have been given to you. If he needed somebody else to pass to that church, that church wouldn't have been given to you. God doesn't make mistakes. God doesn't make mistakes. God doesn't make mistakes. So there, this is not a mistake that God has you uh, doing what you're doing, that God has you raising those children, that God has you pastoring that church. You have what's in you. You have the tools. You have the know-how. You have the strategy to, to do what, what you need to do. And you are enough. I'll say it again. You are enough. God doesn't need any more, any less. And stop looking at people who are doing what you think you want to do. There is room for you to do what you need to do. There's a space that God has created that only you can fill. Go and fill your space and don't worry about what other people are doing. Don't worry about how much followers they have. Don't worry about, about how much better you think they are because they're probably worried as much about another person as you are about them. Comparison is the enemy of progress. If you continually compare yourself to this person and that person, you won't progress. You'll be stuck all your life. So don't compare, just progress. And, and know that you have what it takes to achieve what God's put in you. You might have the same office as somebody, but you do not have the same calling. What I mean by that is I might be a preacher. I might be called to be a preacher like many, many preachers on YouTube out there, but I have a different calling. I'm not called to be TD Jakes. I'm not called to be Mike Todd. I'm not called to be Rich Wilkerson. Those lanes are already filled, but be, and because we're both preachers, uh, we're all preachers, doesn't mean we have the same calling. Just because you run a hair business and she does too, doesn't mean you have the same calling and doesn't mean you have to compete. Find your difference in what you do. Find the unique thing about what you do and use that. If you do coloring for hair and you do a unique style, do that. That's a unique thing to, uh, for you to do and celebrate that. Don't look over at her and say, oh, I wish I could do that. You're not designed to do that. You're designed to be you, who God has created you to be. Because if you spend all your time worried about, oh my God, I'm supposed to, to be like that person because look at that, then you'll miss the greatness inside of you. There is greatness inside of you. Stop comparing yourself to this person and that person, because by doing that, you're di diminishing what God put inside of you. What God put inside of you was great. What God put inside of me as a preacher 
is great. What God put inside of you as a hairdresser is great. What God put inside of you as a mom is great. Stop comparing yourself to other moms to say, oh, that, that mom makes lunches like she cuts the hearts in the sandwich and it looks so pretty, but when I do it, it doesn't it doesn't turn out. You don't need to do that. Just just do it the the way. Just mother the new, the unique way that you mother. Just father the unique way that you father. You don't have to father like them. You don't have to mother like them. You weren't you weren't called to father and mother like them. Those children need what you have. They don't need what your neighbors have because your neighbors would have them. But because they're given to you, they need the particular gifting that you have as a parent for them to get to their destiny. They need the particular eyes, the particular particular gifting, the particular senses that you have to give them as a parent. I'll, I'll see you later. I'll see you later, guys. See you Sunday. Bye.